guys notice that all of a sudden everybody's making videos about the Nikon F4? This is one of my favorite Nikons ever made, second only to the Nikon F3. And this was their flagship camera from 1988 to early 1997. And I could not afford one of these when they were new. I bought mine in 2004 used. This was my main 35 millimeter camera for a number of years. And there's a lot to like about it. And since everybody else is doing a video, I thought I would chime in and give you five reasons why I think the Nikon F4 is a camera worth owning. Number one, knobs. The F4 is a pivotal camera from the minimalistic design qualities of the F3, which later evolve into the strange custom function stuff in the F5 that's accessible from the LCD screen that you had to have the cheat sheet for, which evolved into what we have with digital cameras today where we have menus and almost this computer type layout that's not very intuitive. And for me, the Nikon 4 represents the last of a breed of cameras that was a completely user-based design. In other words, every function on the camera is accessible with either a knob, a dial, or some kind of button. And when you consider how much was added onto the F4 from the F3, it's really impressive how they were able to achieve that. The F3 worked as kind of this native aperture priority camera. You would adjust the aperture on the lens and it would adjust the shutter speed to compensate. You could also use it in manual mode. There were two more modes added, a program mode and a shutter priority mode, as well as three autofocus modes, as well as three metering modes. And so everything is accessible by some kind of dial or switch on the camera. And a lot of attention was paid to the user experience and the layout and the design and everything is really easy to get to. And in many ways today, we're still struggling with coming up with something that's user friendly. And the F4 really represented, I think, the height of camera design in that regard. Number two, metering. The Nikon F4 features three different metering modes that you can select to shoot with. You can use spot metering, which takes a spot reading from the center of the viewfinder. You can use what's called center weighted metering, which is an older style metering that was found on cameras like the F3. And then finally, this was the first of the Nikon flagship cameras to introduce matrix metering which is the system they still use today. Now center weighted metering worked pretty well and basically what it did is the meter in the camera took two different readings of the scene and it put a slight emphasis on things that were in the center of the picture. And it did this with a ratio, and it depends camera to camera, but it's usually an 80-20 or a 75-25. But either way, assuming your subject is going to be in the middle of the scene, that's where it's gonna put the emphasis. Now, there was a workaround if your subject was not in the middle of the scene. What you could do is you could put your subject in the middle and then use the AE lock button to lock in the exposure and then just move over and recompose, and that worked really well. And this worked really well, usually for black and white or even C41 film, but matrix metering enabled a whole new set of features on this in terms of metering because it takes into account things like color and the way that light works in the scene in a much more advanced way than center weighted did. So if you're shooting E6 slide film, this is a much more accurate camera because E6 does not have the kind of latitude that black and white and C41 do usually, so that the exposure is much more crucial. Now, matrix metering is a big deal. They have advanced on that over the years and it has evolved, but this was the first of the flagship cameras to feature that, which brings me to my next point. Reason number three, lens compatibility. Nikon have been extremely consistent with their lens design over the years, and the F4 is pretty much compatible with every lens Nikon has ever made. You can use pre-AI lenses, you can use AI, AIS. There are a few little technicalities. For instance, if you use vibration reduction or VR lenses, vibration reduction is a newer technology and the camera does not support it. You can still use the lenses, you can still use autofocus, you just don't have access to the VR functionality within them. Another weird little quirk is this lens. This is a 50 millimeter F1.4 G lens and there is no aperture collar on here. Now, remember the way the camera's set up, everything is a knob or a dial, there's no LCD screen, there's no scrolling through menus, so you don't have access to actually manually changing the aperture, which takes away aperture priority mode and manual mode. Now, you can still use the camera in program mode and shutter speed mode with this lens, but it does take away some functionality. Now, that is very cool, and the fact that you can pretty much use any lens Nikon has ever made with this camera is awesome, but the feature that sold it for me in the lens department was the compatibility with older manual focus lenses like this one and th this means like AIS or AI lenses it supports full matrix metering through manual focus lenses, and that is a big deal. The F5 does not. The F5 will only do center-weighted metering, and so if you shoot a lot of slide film and you have a lot of these older manual focus lenses, which are very well designed, there's no autofocus, but they're great lenses and they can usually be found very affordably, and you like to use matrix metering, this is why you would want to go with the F4. Now, it is worth noting that there are two other cameras that do support matrix metering in manual focus lenses. That would be the Nikon FA and also the Nikon F6. Now, both 
both those cameras are a very different deal than the F4, and you're not going to find an F6 used anywhere near in the ballpark of affordability as you are with the Nikon F4. Which brings me to my next point, but first I want to give a quick shout out to our sponsor this week, who are the awesome folks over at Squarespace.com. Squarespace offers an all-in-one solution for building beautiful websites, portfolios, an online store, or even a holding page for your domain. You get access to Squarespace's amazing backend that makes building websites a breeze. Head over to Squarespace.com and sign up for the free trial and see just how easy it is to get up and running. If you do decide that Squarespace is right for you, I can save you some money on your order. If you use offer code AOP on checkout, this will save you an additional 10% off your order. So once again, that offer code is AOP, and I want to give a special shout out and thanks to Squarespace for sponsoring another episode of The Art of Photography. Reason number four, price. I remember when the F4 came out when I was a kid, and it was an amazing camera. There was all this amazing functionality. It was designed for professionals and it was way out of most people's budgets. In 1988, this cost list price over $2,000 US, and I think that included a 50 millimeter prime kit lens. But if you account for inflation, that's probably over $3,000, almost $4,000 in today's prices. And so the deal with the F4 is it only survived about nine years. The F3 was one of the longest running Nikon bodies ever at almost 30 years that it was produced. This one was produced by, for about nine years until the F5 came out. They dropped production on this. Then you had the F6 and we moved into the digital cameras. When I bought this in 2004, I paid $250 for it, and the price is pretty much amazing on the used market. Now, technically, this is an F4S because I do have the MB21 battery grip, and I'll talk about that when we get into the design on here. But I think if you're looking for a 35mm camera and you want a lot of functionality, particularly if you shoot slide film, these can be had for a song. Reason number five, design. As I mentioned, the F4 was a very transitional camera for Nikon's flagship lineup, not only in terms of the features it offered with autofocus and matrix metering, but also in size. The F4 is massive and it's also very heavy. It takes a mother load of AA batteries and it is a very big camera. It's kind of funny when you think that it's a 35 millimeter film camera, but it is very big. But the other cool thing about this though is that Nikon took into account the usability and the form factor of the camera. And they took that very seriously. This is a very comfortable camera to hold, as are most of the Nikons that have adopted since this. But with all the knobs being in the right place and the form factor and the contour and the way this fits in your hands, it is a very comfortable camera to shoot on. As I mentioned, this was my main camera for about two years. The only reason I moved away from it is the one drawback is the weight. And I kind of was moving away from shooting 35 millimeter film, particularly slide film. I always liked the look of black and white, but I didn't necessarily need matrix metering for that. And the F3 was a lot lighter. If you walk around shooting street photography with this camera, you will feel it. It is massive, as are most of the big SLR cameras these days. And that's kind of the reason that I stopped using it as much. Plus, we were moving into digital around that time, and I started adapting with that too, so I just wasn't shooting as much E6 film in 35mm. The interesting thing here is there is a roll of film in this camera that's been in here for at least two years, so it will be really interesting to develop that and see what has accumulated on here in that amount of time. But anyway, if you are in the market for a serious 35mm camera, you shoot slide film, you don't want something that's going to break the bank, you want something that's going to adapt to older lenses, the F4 is incredible. If you're a street photographer, you probably want to look elsewhere. I kind of like the F3 over the F4. Anyway, I want to point you to a few other videos that some of my colleagues have done on this. Kai, formerly of Digital Rev, has done one, and his is very funny. I've never met Kai in person, but he has a very entertaining channel, and he runs some expired ectochrome through his F4, so I will link these up on YouTube. The other channel I would recommend to you guys is the Camera Store TV. I have met Jordan, and we have talked a little bit online. They are super cool guys, and they have a segment that they do on their show on that they call Cameras of Yesteryear, where they do reviews on older cameras to see how they still hold up, and they look at the F4 as well. So go check those guys out. They're amazing. If you've enjoyed this video, please remember to like it, share it, and as always, subscribe to The Art of Photography for more videos. I will see you guys in the next one. Until then, go do some good. See ya. Later. <music>